Do you ever wonder why your preschooler should do puzzles or what your preschooler gets out of doing puzzles? Or even what to look for. Believe it or not, there's a lot of learning going on. There's a lot of different levels happening. Puzzles can help your child develop persistence skills, observation skills, analytical skills. My name is Megan. I'm the editor of High Five. And I'm Yvonne. I'm the art director of High Five Magazine. We're going to be talking today about four puzzles in High Five Magazine and how those puzzles can help your child develop lots of great skills. We're going to talk today about some puzzles in High Five Magazine. So the first one we want to talk about is My First Hidden Pictures. This is a puzzle that Highlights is probably best known for. In My First Hidden Pictures, there are nine objects hidden in the illustration. The illustration's in color, the objects are in color, and at the bottom of the spread you see that there are the nine objects in a row. And we have them in the same orientation so that kids can look in the illustration and know exactly what orientation, what shape, what direction the objects are going to be in. We're also hiding objects that are easily found in the everyday world. So bananas, a slice of pizza, pencil, things like that. And in this one, uh, the illustration is of some kids playing uh, on the sidewalk with chalk. So they're drawing pictures. And it's a double page spread, so there's lots of stuff to look at. Um, it's, it's a fun kind of everyday, um, everyday scene. We like to do that kind of like stuff that the kids might be familiar with so that there's another layer to what they're looking at. Not only is there a hidden object, but there is something that might be familiar to them. Mm -hmm. And we've hidden nine objects because that is just the right number to keep kids engaged and challenged without it feeling too easy. And that's a really important part of puzzling for kids in this age group and also throughout the magazine, and is that you want your child to be engaged and challenged, but they don't want to, you, want, you don't want them to be uh, find it too easy. We don't want them to find it too hard because if it's too hard, they're going to give up earlier and they're not going to want to do it. They're going to feel like they're not successful, like they can't do it. We never want kids to feel like they can't do it. They should always feel like they can. They should always take pride in being able to do something. And so we have our puzzles set up so that your child will be able to do all of the puzzles in one form or another. Let's see, our next puzzle is look and look again, which kind of explains it in the title, but it's like you have one image uh, whether it's a photograph or an illustration, and then you have a second one with 15 differences in it um, from the first. So for this month, for the January issue, we have a robot, we have robot food art. So we have have like everyday things that you might find in your kitchen uh, composed into an image of a robot. So that was a lot of fun. There's lots of fun things in there, like I think there was olives and celery and peanut butter and all kinds of fun little things. So. Uh, your little one might be interested in doing some food art, which is always fun because they get to eat it. Um, but also they may be interested in looking back and forth to see what the differences might be. Maybe they want to do their own. You mm -hmm. never know. Oh yeah, that, this is a great <laughs> one. We could, you could definitely imagine that your child might want to do his own version of this picture and that picture. And how are they the same and how are they different? And with this feature, we have two questions that are really important that relate to it. The first question we have is that how are these pictures the same? And then the second question is, how are they different? We really want to focus on the similarities because there are going to be so many similarities between the two images. Kids are really going to be able to figure out and pick out certain things that are the same between the two pictures. A lot of times for older kids, it's all about finding the differences. But for younger kids who are just starting this puzzle, it's OK. They can focus on the similarities. And what you're doing when you work, do this puzzle with your child is you're helping them to understand what's similar, what are, how do you talk about similarities, but also we're letting them feel successful so that they can understand I can do this puzzle even if I'm only finding similarities. Because it's not just about only, it's about it's the different levels of this puzzle. And so an older child might be able to find the differences, a younger child might focus on the similarities. And this is how we make sure that kids at all ages are successful. It's a great way to, uh, it's a great introduction and it's a really fun one. What's also important for us in helping kids feel successful is we don't have a specific number. We're not saying to find 12 differences or find 15 differences. We don't put that down because it's not a race to the finish, it's about working on observation skills. And in all the puzzles in High Five, we're really focused on building kids' skills. It's observation skills, it's ana analytical skills. There's so many things that they can work on and that they can improve on just by playing puzzles. So even though it might seem like it's silly or just something lighthearted, kids are actually really focusing and spending time on these puzzles. 
And it's great because you're developing persistence, their observation skills. There's so much kids get out of puzzling. Um, it's, it's not the slight thing. So there's a definitely a great reason. There's so many great reasons for you to sit down and do these with your child. Um, fun is the number one, but there are also so many other levels to puzzling. Especially in the next one we want to talk about, That Silly. Uh, that Silly is a puzzle that's a double page spread. It's usually an event or a big place like an airport uh, or a bookstore and you see a lot of little things going on and there's lots of silly things going on and there's like regular things going on and it's fun to kind of pick out what's silly and what isn't but also it's just a lot of information for the child to look at and they just might like looking at that um, at the moment and then maybe in a month they want to start looking for some of the silly things that are in there but that silly is, is my favorite because we get to think of silly things to put on the page. <laughs> and so if you have, have any silly ideas that you think would be great, um, email us. Um, the account yeah. is eds at highlights.com. We're always happy to hear from you. Uh, that's silly, like as you, like Yvonne said, is a combination of silly things and real things because kids have to understand what's real in order to understand what's silly. And what I love about this piece is that the question you get to ask your kid is why? Why is that silly? And so you're inviting them and you're asking them to say, to tell you why is that silly? And they're using their analytical skills. And so although it seems like they're just looking at a bunch of silly things, they might be laughing at it, um, it's a really great time to think about what's silly and why. And as a parent, you can have fun playing around with it and say, hey, I think that is silly. And your kid might say, no, that's not silly. And so if you pick things that are not as silly, your child might have a lot of fun telling you why that is not silly. So there's so many ways that you can talk about the scene, talk about what's happening in the bookstore, and say, I think this is silly, or I think that's not silly. Yeah, so it's this a one's a great in a conversation store. piece. Yeah. My, yeah, so this one's in a bookstore. So that's why you said it was a bookstore. Uh -huh. <laughs> but there's like all kinds of stuff happening in the bookstore. There's a lion sitting in a chair, and he's reading. It's really cute. And uh, I think that might be a fun one. Uh, we were talking about, was it a raccoon on roller skates? There's a raccoon on roller skates. Yeah. We've got lion, uh, no, giraffes in the humor section laughing. That's, that's a fun one. I think um, I, one of the questions I would love to ask is, you know, you see the giraffes um, laughing and ask your child, what, are they, what do you think they're laughing at? What do you think? Is, did one of them tell a joke? Are they reading a joke book? What might that joke be? Next puzzle is the poem puzzle. Poem puzzle. Yeah. Poem puzzle. Which is fun. That one's I like that one because you have a poem with it. There's a poem and then there's an image that is showing what's in the poem. And then the puzzle part of this would be hiding things in the illustration. Right. So there's always um, there's some questions that we ask that relate to the poem and the illustration. And in January, it's uh, the poem is about bears. It's called Bears on a Roll, and they are they're bears in a jeep, and they are about to go bowling. And so the first question is, look for things that, look for the letter B. And so in the illustration, we have the letter B hidden around in different places. The letter B, it's, it's capitalized letter B, it's always in the right or correct orientation. And we do this so that kids can understand. And your kid doesn't have to be a whiz at identifying all the letters of the alphabet because that comes much later. Your kid, if they know what the letter B looks like, and they will because we're putting it right on the page, they're gonna be able to find it right there. And what we've done is that we've hidden some bees that are really obvious and some bees that are a little more subtle. And so kids at different ages are going to be able to find different bees. And that's why we think about, we have to think about um, your kids at, at every age. So if your child is really great at doing puzzles, your child's probably going to find all the bees. If your child is just doing this for the first time, they might find a few of the bees. And that's fine because, again, like look and look again, we're not saying this is how many you need to find. It's really about meeting your child where your child is. And you know your child best. So however you want to do the poem puzzle, however you want to ask the questions, what you're going to find, it's really about what your child can do. And it's, there's no pressure. It's just a fun way to engage and to look for a, the letter B. So it's learning. It's fun. A great combination. Yeah, a lot of fun things in this illustration. There's, there's an elephant with a like I think it's like a dad elephant with a baby mm -hmm. and the baby carrier. There's there's goats. There's little bees. There's uh, three bears in a jeep, and they're super cute. This illustrator is so great at doing animals, especially elephants. So my favorite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but I think in the, in the end, all the puzzles challenge your child in different ways. And and if they're not interested at that you know at that time, they may get interested you know, down the line. So there's going to be lots of um, layers and, and it's, sometimes it's just a matter of processing what it's all about. So 
There's always something for your child to come back to again and again. So one week your child might be interested in doing one puzzle and they might like the picture and then the next week they might want to pick it up and look at it and do it, do the puzzle in a different way. So there are lots of ways and lots of reasons to go back to the, the puzzles again and again. So it's a great, it's a great piece that's going to really engage your child and help them feel like confident and proud in what they can do. So that's it for now. And that's Puzzles and High Five. Thanks for watching.